Problem 1632, we're going to do an income statement, balance sheet, and then a statement of cash flows. In the whole book, this might be the best overview problem of them all. So official reserve coins was formed on January 1st. So this is a new company. Additional data for the year is as follows. So we've got some transaction that has happened that have happened during the year. Here's our requirements. We're going to talk about what's the purpose of the statement of cash flows. We're going to create an income statement, then a balance sheet, and then the statement of cash flows using, of course, the indirect method. So requirement one, what is the purpose of the statement of cash flows? So looking at these, what do you think? Well, the whole purpose of the statement of cash flows is to show where cash came from, what was the source, and how was cash being spent during the period. Now we need to create an income statement, revenues minus expenses. Now there are several ways to do this problem. You can just go through here and pick the revenues and expenses and later do the same with uh, the balance sheet and the statement of cash flows. But our students have found that the best way to do this is to take all these transactions and put them in the journal. And then once we have our list of transactions in the journal, then we can come back and we can create our income statement. So what I've placed for you on Canvas is a blank journal so you can do your own journal entries. And what I've done here is I have placed these transactions in my own journal. So let's start putting these transactions into a journal. So on January 1st, remember this is a new company, it says it was formed on January 1st, they issued no par common stock for $500,000. So is, if we're issuing common stock, we know we're receiving cash. So in the journal, for transaction A, I've recorded cash going up, common stock increasing, $500,000. It says it's no par common stock, so there is no paid in capital in excess of par. Okay, now for color coding wise, later when we create our income statement balance sheet and statement of cash flows, it's nice to have this color coded. It's not required, but it helps us. So just for your information, cash transactions or the cash portion of transactions I've done in green, expenses are in red, revenue is in purple, and inventory is in blue. So we've accomplished the first, we've journalized the first transaction. B, early in January, ORC made the following cash payments. So B1, for store fixtures, they spent $54,000. Now you might be asking, well, what are store fixtures? These are things like shelf, shelving units, display cases, etc. So these are assets in the business that will later have to be depreciated because shelving units do not last forever. So once again, we bought store fixtures and we paid cash. So I've journalized this as store, store fixtures being debited, cash being credited. So now let's do B2. They made the following cash payments for inventory, $270,000. So I've journalized inventory as a debit and cash is going down with a credit. And notice I put B2 so we can keep track of what we're doing. Now B3, work made the following cash payments for rent expense on a store building, $11,000. So we have our first expense, B3, rent expense. Remember, I'm doing expenses in red. Why am I doing it in red? Because then later when we're looking for all our expenses for the statement or for the income statement, it's easy to find them. So rent expenses increasing $11,000, cash is decreasing 11,000. So that was B3. Now we're gonna do C. Later in the year, work purchased inventory on account 
for 244,000. Let's stop there and just do that portion. So the first part of C, they purchase inventory on account, $244,000. So here's C, inventory is going up 244,000. AP, since we bought it on account, is going up 244,000. Comment, bought inventory on account. Now let's look at the second part of C. Before year end, Ork paid $144,000 of this AP. So they're going to pay $144,000 of the AP. So we have to lower, in the second part of C, we're going to lower this AP by $144,000, and we have to pay cash. So that's how we journalize transaction C. Now let's do D. During 2016, Ork sold 2,300 2, units of inventory for $225 each. And then later we're going to collect. Before the year end, the company collected 90% of this amount. So what they're saying is that this sale was on account. So we're going to sell 2,300 units at $225 each on account. Why on account? Because later it says we collect 90% of this amount meaning it was all on account. So this is transaction D. Remember when we sell a product, it's gonna consist of two transactions. The first part of the transaction is what we're charging our customer. The second part of the transaction is our, the cost of the goods for, to us. So AR is increasing, 2,300 units times 225 equals 517,500. And then we increase sales revenue, 517,500. And I'm doing revenue in purple, so we can find it easy later. Let's go back and for more additional information from D. It says cost of goods sold for the year was 320,000. So this is the only sales transaction we're gonna record in the year. And the total COGS for the year was 320000 So in the second part of D, we're going to increase our cost of goods sold, 320000 and inventory is lowered, $320,000. Now remember, cost of goods sold is an expense, so I put it in red. A lot of students forget it's an expense. And now let's see what's in the second part of D. It says before year end, the company collected 90% of this amount. So 90% of the AR will be lowered as we collect it. So here was our AR to begin with, 517,500. And now we're gonna collect 90% of it. So our cash is gonna increase 90% of 517,500 gives us 465,750. And then AR, this AR is going to be decreasing by that amount. So now we are done with D. So let's move on to transaction E is an elephant. The store employs three people. The combined annual payroll is $88,000. So for the whole year, our payroll is going to be $88,000. So that's our total expense. And at the year end, they paid all of it except for 6000 of it. So that means we've paid 82000 and then 6000 is still a wages payable. So this 88000 is a salaries and wages expense. 88000 And of this 88000 6000 is left to be paid. So we put that in salaries payable. And then the rest we ha must have paid, $82,000 cash going down. So we are now done with transaction E. Transaction F. At the end of the year, ORC paid income tax of $20,000. There are no income taxes payable. So they paid off all of it. So we've got an income tax expense of $20,000 and then cash going down of $20,000. For transaction F. So income tax expense, 20000 Cash is going down, 20000 Now we're getting close to being done. 
with a journal. Transaction G, late in 2016, ORC paid cash dividends of $35,000. So let's do this one realistically. When they pay cash dividends, they first declare the dividend. So as you hopefully recall, cash dividends, which is a contra equity account, will be increased. This $35,000 is an increase to the cash dividends, a contra equity account. Remember, a cash dividends account for a corporation is the equivalent to a draw account for a sole proprietorship. And then because on the day we declare the dividend, we don't actually pay it that day, we have to have a payable. And then later, we're going to eventually pay that dividend, probably a few weeks, several weeks later, we're going to pay the dividend so the payable goes away and our cash goes down. So that's our paying our dividends. And then we got, I think, one more transaction, transaction H. For store fixtures, those shelving units, ORC uses the straight line depreciation method over five years with zero residual value. So this is the last transaction we have to record in the journal. So here's the formula. The comment recorded depreciation, and I misspelled depreciation. Straight line depreciation equals cost minus salvage value. So this is the depreciation formula for straight line depreciation divided by the number of years. So it's the cost of the thing minus what you think you can sell it for divided by the number of years of useful life. So the problem said they cost, the fixtures cost $54,000. They will have zero residual value. So they will probably be worthless when we're done using them after five years. So do the math, we get $10,000, $10,800 of depreciation per year. So our entry to record depreciation expense is depreciation expense being debited and accumulated depreciation, a contra asset account being credited. Now, in the second video for this problem, we will be using this journal to create the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows.